sometimes there's some clothing pieces that I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I could pull that off. Well, what you, sort of clothing are you? Are you a Depop girly? No, my sister is. I guess I've always been like a jeans and t-shirt kind of girly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so getting out of anything out of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I love a good t-shirt, good vintage. What you're wearing right, right now is kind of like, is that oh, yeah, Lu- great. Louis Capaldi, the DJ? Um, uh, yeah. DJ? The, He's that, a singer. A singer? A singer-songwriter extraordinaire. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, no. He's amazing. He's incredible. I'm He's also hilarious. A little Wait, obsessed what? with He's him. He's legit hilarious. <laughs> he could be a comedian. He's, he, he actually could be. Yeah. He'd be so good. <laughs> Have you ever seen him just on a talk show? I've never seen him ever. <laughs> I don't know like any. I'm this not gonna. You're gonna time. watch him for five minutes and be like, I want to be his best friend. <laughs> yes. You're gonna think that. Really. He yeah. is the coolest he, guy. He, and he's, he's so good. Scottish. He yeah. like beautiful accent, well, that's yes. funny. voice, beautiful everything. Exactly. Just yeah. a, a gorgeous guy. Yeah. Hilarious. He, he always like takes up space in a room yes just effortlessly beautifully he takes yeah. up space very that's a the, really good way to describe him <laughs> are you like a really big fan of his oh huge fan yeah i uh my friend got me a calendar of his face um for 2020 uh-huh. and i still have it up because I, i'm like i can't <laughs> throw this away and yeah. so uh yeah then i have a t-shirt um i'm seeing him in april <gasps> I was supposed to see him in 2020 uh, for my birthday, but it got canceled. Of course. So he's coming back. Why? Uh, oh, yeah. It was this little thing mm. that they were like, we probably shouldn't be traveling. <laughs> oh, oh uh, regulations. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Weird. Tough. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you seeing him? Um. Oh, shoot. So, okay. It was supposed to be at uh, Barclays Center the first time he was going to come. But then that got canceled, and now he's performing at Radio City Music Hall. Um, okay, so step down. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, know. <Yeah. laughs> oh, Not as big. Boo. Not as big. So. Sorry, Louis. <laughs> yeah. you'll, you'll make it one day. <laughs> Keep trucking along. <laughs> right? I do think the Barclays Center, honestly, has terrible acoustics. Okay. I've well, never once been inside the Barclays Center. Same. Yeah. I've walked by. Never been in. Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird... I saw the black keys there with my dad. <gasps> Come to think of it, I don't know if the Barclays Center had bad acoustics or the Black Keys are just kind of a <laughs> shitty band. Uh, and you should it? leave that as a review. Just be like, two and a half stars. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> what is one of their songs? The Black the, Keys? Uh, yeah. I, don't, oh. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. Even... I don't know. If you play it, I'll be like, oh, I know this, but I don't know yes. the names. of. Let yeah, me I, Google yeah. quickly. And it wouldn't be like, it, a song would come on, I'd be like, this is the Black Keys. I Exa- wouldn't yeah. know. No. Oh, um. Yeah, right? No, no. I thought you were going to go. What is that? I don't know. Is that? Bring her over here. Take a dear sister over here. Let her dance with me just for the hell of it. Oh, oh, I thought... What did you think it was? I thought it was a Muppet song, but then I... <laughs> it's not. I got mixed up. No, no okay. Oh, yeah, that... Don't listen to me. I do, I do know both of those songs, but I don't know why. Yeah. Two don't and a half why. stars. Two, yeah. <laughs> don't know why. Two and a half stars. I don't know why I know it. Would recommend once I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. I thought Louis Capaldi was a DJ because he has that one song that's like... Kind of feels DJ coded. Really? Yeah. Um, what, what's what, give it? Give us a little burst. It's like. <laughs> That's the Muppets. That yes, is yes. the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like <laughs> You're not familiar. Do you do you have any anything ringing any bells? I feel like because uh, his most popular song is. Um, Someone I used to, oh yeah, or someone I, I always fuck up the title. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah. I think that's the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, me through it all. Yes. Yeah. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And then the music's like, (laughs) you know, exactly. That he he has like just this deep resonant voice. Sings very sad songs. And, but then his persona is so funny. Yeah. So it's really... And what's, I saw a clip of him on, uh, I think it was on TikTok, where he's like, 
he tries to hit a high note and it's a little bit shaky and then he just he's he like takes the mic off and turns to the back he was like that was dog shit i'm so sorry he's like yeah. i'm so sorry you guys yeah, he's uh, just he's so real he is he's such a real dude there's no facade yeah of yeah stage persona yeah he's, so he's endearing Yes. Yeah, he's very into, like he had a, like a he was on like the Graham Norton show with Jamie Dornan, who is like Christian Grey <laughs> in uh, Fifty Shades. Lucas, he, I know who Jamie Dornan is. You think I haven't seen those movies multiple times? Do you notice how I didn't assume you would know to sort of make you look l- like not a perv? You see what I just did there? You see what I just did? <laughs> everyone, allyship, allyship, and uh, but he was like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't recognize you without like a harness on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or without my cock in my hand. <laughs> no, it was, no, no, no. It was like I didn't recognize you without a whip in your hand or my cock in mine. Yeah, <laughs> it was so good. He's such. He's so good. That's pretty. Funny. I'm on the pod. We love you. <laughs> Please, oh, we'd be. Oh yeah. I feel like he would be a great improviser as well. Um, oh, like, he'd be. He'd be amazing at anything, anything and everything. He'd be amazing, but not as amazing as our guest on oh, Two yeah. Nosy Meerkats podcast. <laughs> well, I got so sucked in on the moment. Welcome to <laughs> Two Nosy Meerkats, everyone. Welcome, everyone. We have a fantastic guest, fantastic comedian. Uh, you may uh, go to her open mic that she shares with yes. the wonderful Ryan Seawitz, uh called Silly Goof on Wednesdays at Star Bar in Brooklyn, one of my favorite places to go and one of my favorite people in the world. Give a round of applause for Allie Lawrence. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just thrilled, beyond honored. Uh, yeah, y'all are some of my favorite people. Oh, you're, yes. some, of my, you're <laughs> some of my favorite some. people. Oh, and my favorite people. Oh, okay. So we're sum <laughs> of and the and, and the sum and total. Exactly. <laughs> All of your personalities are my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I like everything oh. you bring to the table. I, I'd love to know. So we've talked ad nauseum about Louis Capaldi. Who are yes. some other big musical influences for you? Because I know you're a very musical Ooh. person. Yes, it's uh, so funny. Growing up, um, music was a big part of my family Mm -hmm. we weren't allowed to watch much tv uh so most of the forms of entertainment were popping a tape or a cd in the player and just dancing around the house um and then we did a lot of road trips as kids so it was the same kind of thing um my parents really loved john denver dar williams uh kind of like americana Yes. Um, and it's interesting. My siblings are more into country esque okay. music than Ooh. I am. Um, How do you react emotionally to country music? Yes, I think I have an appreciation for a certain brand of it. Like, uh, I don't know. You know, there's some classics, Dolly Parton, and oh yeah, like yeah. certain people that you're like, oh, of, of course, yeah. Um, but then some of the, I don't know. I'm not one to sh- turn on Blake Shelton. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then you're um, talking to the wrong people. Okay. One would not find <laughs> him in the rotation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But if it, if he is in yours, that's fine. You're talking right. to some Shelton heads right here. Oh, yeah. Big on the Shelton dog. <laughs> one of my friends from high school. You Sexiest s- man alive one year. He was, <gasps> he was, he was rigged. Well, Do you guys you remember that? It's that's right. That's how you know it's rigged. <laughs> one of my friends from high school used to be really into like the lore that like... Blake Shelton and Adam Lambert were dating. Oh, on The Voice. I, I, on the I voice? have no clue about any of this. Isn't he with Gwen Stefani? Yes. Yes. And, and she was famously the only person voting for a sexiest man that yes. year. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It does make you wonder like who like was like, hey, this is my nephew Blake. Could you just like could you just like shoehorn him in for me? Just like make it a lot easier. I think they were trying to get like a certain part of middle America. Like with that, but like Mm. Sexiest Man Alive already has crazy brand recognition. And I also don't understand how tastes and preferences in like who you find sexy are political. Yeah. I don't know why they're like, oh, let's get let's get the Republicans to respect Sexiest Man Alive again. Like Sexiest Man Alive is supposed to be objective. Mm. But also like. What is the criteria for a person who gets to vote on that? Yes. How are those like like the like the Academy like the Academy Awards like we we can talk about like you know like Oscar so what or like having like a, a good demographic but like 
by and large, those are at least industry professionals. Like, you know that they are in there for a reason. Who votes for Sexiest Man Alive? And how do you qualify for that? It's so true. Yeah, is it just like people editors? Uh, yeah. People's, I, I guess. I do think People, people? Magazine picks. Yeah. I, I think that they do. But I could be wrong. Maybe there's like a, a <laughs> jury of yeah. people who have had mm. sex before. A, a, panel? <laughs> a panel? Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what I would love to see, I would love to see a... Um, Google this? I think it should be Google. I, I would love yeah. to see like a sexiest man alive, but only voted by people who are not attracted to men. Yes. This I would love to see. Because that would be, I feel like, a just... Yeah, exactly. It would be it would be like oh I I appreciate this this guy I notice what other people see and it, but then it would even be more powerful because you would be like I'm not attracted to this guy but even I feel it exactly you know? yeah uh, I just looked it up and there is no panel to select oh. the sexiest man alive it's just People magazine just decides for all of us <laughs> which feels like what do they call it monarchy. Uh, fascism. Fascism, fascism. That's what yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we keep confusing the two. What is it called? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Mon- oh when when someone just makes the decision for you, what's it called? The queen? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine Prince Harry getting to decide who is sexiest man alive. I want to see. <laughs> He'd choose himself, I think. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if he would do that. I think you. I think he would go with someone else. I'm. I'm listening to his book. Oh, and let me tell you, he's. I'm, I've got up to where he meets Courtney Cox, and he makes it awkward. Oh no! I'm not gonna spoil it for anyone, but uh, check out the book. <laughs> Spare out now. Do you mean he makes it awkward in the book, or like with Courtney Cox? With Courtney Cox. Uh, I. Well, I. I don't know much about the book, yeah. but I would love if people that he talks about could respond that would be good because i'd love to hear courtney's side of (laughs) (laughs) to be fair he doesn't actually make it but he talks about how awkward he felt because like he says i'll spoil this one bit he says she was monica and i always thought that i was a chandler do i say this oh (laughs) yeah man definitely say that yeah definitely say that it's gonna go great (laughs) well i'm sure she hears that Oh, all the Frequently. time. Frequently, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, well, if I were in Friends, <laughs> <laughs> you and me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, growing up, my parents really enjoyed the TV show Friends. Mm. And my mom had the box set, so she oh. showed my sister and myself. And they're, I don't know, there's such a an interesting lore around the TV show. Mm. And, uh, how, what kind of lore? Just, um, I don't know for my mom. She thinks of it as a really like, that is how people live in New York. Right. Cause that, uh, yeah, it was how she viewed it or yeah. like, Oh yeah. Young friendship. <laughs> <laughs> um, is your mother a French <laughs> diplomat? Young friendship. Young friendship. <laughs> Is your mom like a theater teacher with a really big scarf? <laughs> oh, that would be cool. <laughs> no, she, uh, yeah, I I don't know. It was like, it, she does tend to build up a lot of the media she enjoys. Okay. Um, and I think my sister will often feel similarly. Because mm-hmm. uh, she was like, oh, I, I want the Friends box set. I was like, you, you got it. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> oh, wait. Um, so like... I want to inherit it. Inherit it exactly, oh like that. <laughs> that is mine. Wait, um, is, oh wait, can I ask? Is your is your sister dating? And if so, does she say I'm going to come into a box set very soon? <laughs> 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 That's she, very good. Yes, she she is dating, and I'm sure that is like. Yeah. We must have a shelf for the friends box set. <laughs> My prized possession, <laughs> exactly. What, do you, what pe- is your prize bo- possession? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. What do you want to inherit? I'm going to get you guys coffee. Oh. You, you, know, you take it black, right? Yeah. And then you would like yeah. a little more. That's yeah. great. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Well, you know what they say. I can't believe I even started speaking before I had my coffee. <laughs> I can't believe I even looked at you before I had my coffee. I haven't woken up yet. I run. Um, it's 3 p.m. I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I can't formulate thoughts. Yeah. Wait, Allie, do you have any allergies? Yeah. Uh, just to gold, but not food. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas 
Please don't that- put any gold in the coffee. <laughs> oh, great. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> Clipping that. <laughs> I always liked at restaurants like for a while when they first started asking about food allergies oh, yeah. being like do you have any allergies I would always get confused when they asked that I'd be like um cats they're like well we don't sell <laughs> we don't sell cats you won't run into that here <laughs> like, oh I sometimes I'll do that where it's like a disconnect of no but no nuts no nuts <laughs> no nuts but <laughs> what if you just died on this podcast <laughs> because you were joking about your allergies but then you were actually allergic I, was, I learned cashews were the <laughs> cashews were your allergy <laughs> how did you find out you're allergic to gold when i got my ears pierced oh um, that oh, was I like exactly that uh yeah changed changed it all mm. and then i got further allergy testing and that was like the worst one allergy testing is crazy right it really did you ever go through uh, allergy yeah testing? I, did. I never have they like basically put a little smorgasbord that looks like remember those candies that were little buttons of sugar mm. oh i've seen what it looks like i know yeah. what they like they t- like they prick your arm and they yeah they do the thing. they just take a bunch of specimens and they just put it onto your arm like it's a little like you know bracelet or something and then they take it off and then Mm. whatever bump you have the most of corresponds to what you're most allergic to yes yeah and i i had the arm and then um they did i think 80 allergens on my back that i had to have for three days like you couldn't sweat or get it wet um how do you stop sweating so you had to keep it on for three days straight yes and i've never i was like oh (laughs) <laughs> yeah i'm sure yeah. jesus <laughs> a dog on the on a tree <laughs> trying to uh. itch it <laughs> um yeah that uh found out there i was also allergic to natural rubbers and oh. um it, like latex whole, synthetic Not, rubbers you're good with it's so it's vinyl is fine like for for food service uh because that was the issue i was having i was having the these hives and rashes mm. up my arm um so yeah it's just natural rubber like butyl nitrile uh yeah not latex and not vinyl right but yes yeah, do, so, do you have any allergies gabby just i was saying earlier i'm allergic to cats but i love them oh, so yeah. much uh, lee actually bought allergy medicine for her apartment so that when i come over <gasps> to see the cats oh I'm not oh that's impacted. that's pretty yeah. good yeah I uh I found out that I had seas- was developing seasonal allergies in 2021 because oh I was upstate with my mom and I was like I was like I don't know why I keep itching my eyes like I keep scratching them she was like this is when it happened for me too 26 and I was like <laughs> no why did she I act can't. so grave about it oh no she, no she just because I it was it was something that she That's was what like happened to me. <laughs> It was something the like sickness. she was, uh, yeah. She was like a little bit proud or just happy of the fact that I didn't have allergies my whole life, yes. and that I ne- and that I like I could eat anything, I could go anywhere, it was all good. And then she just to see that I, because my dad also never his whole life any allergies, and so when when she saw that I was like doing it, she was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." She felt like she was like did it herself. I was like, "I kind of blame you. I do kind of blame." You. Like, I, I wasn't gonna say it, but yeah. you brought it up. The- you brought no. it up. <laughs> Yeah, poor me, poor me. Yeah, no, yeah. really is the uh, worst. I feel like um, learned a lot about either having uh, f- like they food, um, outdoor stuff, mm. chemical stuff. That, like there's so much you can be allergic to. Yeah, yeah. microplastics. Mm. Yes. Yes. Full Co-hosts. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I, I don't get that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Can you believe it? I just die. Yeah. Oh god, I did once. I once had a very strong allergic reaction to a co-host. Yeah. Oh, mm. I'm, uh, it's been going on for two years. Happens um, to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> Happens to the best. You and Ryan, you're like yeah. sneezing on stage. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can do this anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I once broke out into hives after eating very old kimchi. 
And I've had kimchi wow. before and since, and it's been fine. But for some reason, my whole body turned red. It was really bad. And I took an antihistamine, and I was fine. But I was like, what the fuck was that? Yes. No idea what happened. Well, to that, this day, I don't really know. I feel like that is often with allergies. It's like sometimes it's not a repeated thing. So you're mm-hmm. like, I get I guess this was the only out of the ordinary thing. So just my body's super passive aggressive. So like I'm going to wig out one time. Yes. Yeah. And then- yeah. <laughs> I was a big fan of when it happened to me at Brighton Beach when I went swimming. I was a big fan. <laughs> I was a- <laughs> well, I was a big fan of it because um, I was like 14 and wearing a bikini for the first time. And like I haven't spoken about this very much. I've been trying to do more on it lately. But when I was 14, oh I had like a fully adult body. Okay. I had like yes. full tits and an ass and like the same voice, which is really weird for a 14 year old. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I like walked out of the, I was, you know, I was a kid, so I felt all self conscious in my bikini. And I walked out of the ocean and everyone was looking at me. And I was like, I bet they're looking at me because I have boobs. And then I like go over to the towel where my mom and sister's sitting. And I tell my sister, I was like, I think everyone's looking at my body. And they were like, she was like, you have hives everywhere. Oh, <laughs> everyone was looking at me because I was red and bumpy. <laughs> oh no! And they're concerned for yeah, oh. they're concerned for my health. They oh, were like, goodness. "Why is Larry the lobster coming yeah. out of here?" <laughs> what happened in the ocean? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, Brighton Beach probably has some like chemicals. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, there's some needles floating around that'll yeah that'll do something get get yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel like that uh, puberty is such a raw, terrible experience. Oh. And having that like before and after mm. of like, oh, I'm in the in-between, but I f- feel so uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your moment of that? Yeah. Yes. I. So I'm the oldest of three, which I never enjoyed because I never wanted to be the first one to kind of have to do things. Mm. <laughs> right. You didn't enjoy bullying your siblings a bit? A, a little a little bit. I enjoyed um, lightly lying to them and then having them discover <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what would you lie um, about? Oh, when we were really little, uh, I told my sister, I was like, oh, boys actually wear ponytails in the front of their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if they have long hair and so we were i don't know out in the world and she goes ali there's a boy wearing a girl ponytail (laughs) (laughs) and we were like uh you know six and five so there's a lot of uh just like little things that it's harmless harmless but then yeah but then for them to be like wait you that's a why did you do that? <laughs> That's such a fun. That's a older good prank thing. to right? play. That's good. Just like little um, things, and then be part of the discovery with them, and then kind of laugh about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, but we went um, on a trip. My grandmother lived in Canada for a time, and uh, we were up in Canada, and I had like just started to develop. Uh, and I was like, I'm only going to wear sports bras. But I remember the entire time just like concave, not wanting. We would go to the beach and not wanting to like wear, <laughs> uh, you know, anything that revealed uh, mm-hmm. the like new body. Yeah. And I was also I was curvier than a lot of my family members and. Uh, friends, and so I was like, I go, go, It's the internal. Wait, what, you, wait, what does that mean? What's what's that? What's that voice? What's that saying? Yes, just internally, like, oh, it feels so comfortable. Um, okay. I speak that language. Yes, yes. You know what it is? It's like, <laughs> oh, I needed that translated for me. That's why. That's I was like, I don't, I don't. It's like that black key song. <laughs> you know wow this one is really cooking (laughs) Um, yeah like having your siblings still in childhood and they can be free to run around and i don't know be to me i was like oh they can be themselves and i 
I have to. Were you like jealous of that? I'm very jealous. Yeah. Mm. And like I had crossed over into this unknown. Mm. Um, well, now I'm curious, like, were you aware when their mm. bodies started changing and how that affected their psyche? A little less so. I feel like, okay. uh, yeah, I, I guess I was kind of at that point, like, oh, I've already done this, still uncomfortable. And then the only thing I remember is with my brother, we would occasionally razz him when he'd get a voice crack. Um, but <laughs> well, that was, that's a lot of fun. Exactly. But that's uh, that's so fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, what? Your little voice is different, <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, your little, little bitch boy voice. <laughs> I don't know what I would have done if I'd had a brother. I feel like... Um, my sister and I always talk about this because I have I have only one sibling, and she and I always talk about it. if we had a baby sister, we would have like tried to like mentor her until she became cooler than us. Oh, I love that. But if we had a brother, we would have like ruined his life. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about it where, not to be gender essentialist, but it is so much more fun to bully boys. <laughs> That's true. That's you true. find that right? <laughs> yes. You wanted to bully your brother more than your sister. It is. Well, you look at all... them like, look how he's dressed. He's yeah. asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was funny kind of how our dynamics shifted as the years went on. Like mm -hmm. um, sometimes it was my brother and I ganging up on my sister or my sister and I on my brother. And uh, but the other two, they can't they can't touch me. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they had a secret coalition like we're gonna rebel one day? I could see it. Yeah. The, um, I don't know. They they went to school together for most of their lives. Like, how, how far are the age gaps between you all? Oh yes. Yeah. So my sister and I are almost Irish twins. Okay, um, yeah, you're like a year apart, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then my brother, I'm five ish years older than him. Okay. Four or five. Okay. Um. Wait. So why did they go to school with each other then? Yes. Yeah, so. My sister was looking for high school when my brother was looking for middle school and they ended up going to the same like middle high school. Right. Okay. So he was in middle school f slash high school when she was in high school uh, and then they went to the same college. Um, so they've just had uh, like a little more school crossover yeah. in, in their okay. like adult ish lives. Okay. Um, yeah. So they have a lot of, you know people in common or teachers in common that I uh when they were in high school it was kind of like um a lot of families were like oh you have a third kid uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so I was the yeah the the third Lawrence that you're like the Frankie Jonas exactly of the family oh yes. my god yeah I'm the bonus <laughs> <laughs> bonus Jonas yeah. Oh, Frankie no. Jonas is like pretty <laughs> chill about being the other Jonas brother. Yeah. I feel like he never wanted to be like a super famous kid. Good. Yeah. That's exactly. good. I'm yes. glad that a family has that. <laughs> At least one kid would be like, okay, we didn't. Okay. <laughs> yeah. He's like, nor the Jonas brothers, honestly, their dynamic is crazy to me. What, you, is, what do you, you think their dynamic is? Well, are you a Joe Bro fan? Um, I never knew them. Because uh, you didn't watch that much. What TV. were you allowed to watch then? PBS okay. on the occasion. Arthur was oh, yeah. most of my childhood. Um, and then some Cyber Chase, but it was pretty <gasps> scary for me. Oh, that was an amazing show. <laughs> Cyber Chase, yeah. Was Wait, was there a point where your parents were like, okay, we're going to allow you to see some more stuff? A little bit. Uh, I'm but, sensing no. Well, for me, it took a really long time, it felt like. Um, I think they became more lenient with my siblings, mm. oh. and I was always jealous of that too. Yeah. Oh, that's the older. So they were trying thing. out the strictness on you and seeing how it worked out. Exactly, that's what my parents oh. did to me too. That's yeah. like an older sibling. Really? Oh. That's like a classic older sibling thing. Wow, Everything's I'm an only tighter. child, so I just got the full brunt. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there was no experimentation. They were like, "All right, this is a choice. Right. This is, yeah, everything all at once. Yeah, <laughs> oh it's just like that movie. Yeah." yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um yeah, and the, I I went to a sleepover in 8th grade and um watched The Hangover and I told my mom and she flipped out. Um like, you should not be watching our movies. I was like <laughs> I, I didn't even understand most of it. <laughs> oh my so, god. Yeah, 
I feel like eighth grade is a little early for the hangover. No, that's prime time oh, for okay. hangover. Prime time. <laughs> I feel like for me it was like more high school. Like that Maybe. was more like the hangover years. I associate yes. like I associate like middle school as the time where you just get so into R-rated comedy. <laughs> right. Like that's just like like South Park, Jackass, uh, fucking hangover. Just like. And not to gender it, but especially as a boy, that that is a special point in a boy's life where you sure. get into R-rated comedy. Yeah, it's just it's so like it's just, it, it hits something. <laughs> There's something that is awakened when you when you see that. And do you remember your first R comedy that you saw? Oh, to be fair, my parents, le- th- I, my parents, at some points they were like, "I'm not sure Lucas should be seeing this," but in general, they kind of let me see pretty much wherever I want. Like I yeah. saw. Like, I don't know if you'd call this, like, this isn't, like, an R-rated comedy, but I saw the movie Love Actually, which has, mm. like, nudity on it and sex and swearing and stuff. And I watched that when it came out when I was, like, eight. <gasps> wow. Yeah. Oh, th- that. I watched Borat with my parents <gasps> when when I was 11. And that was when my mom was, like, like when, uh, and, like, the big guy who's his manager, like, when they get into, like, a naked fight, my mom was, like, I don't know if I like this for Lucas <laughs> right. to watch. Yeah. But yeah, in general, we kind of, they were always allowing me to, also they, what I kind of appreciate is they knew how much just went over my head. Totally. So much like. Oh, a lot goes over your head as a kid. So yeah. much goes Especially over your, your head. head. Yeah. Yeah. My head goes over my head. This is yeah. why I look <laughs> like this. My head goes over <laughs> Yeah, you got a couple heads stacked in there, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm three heads in a trench coat just trying to get into yeah. the movie theater. <laughs> and Gabby, did you have a, like yeah, R-rated movie you? that you Oh, okay. Well, the first R-rated tourist? movie I ever saw was, um, uh, what is that movie called? The Michael Moore movie, Fahrenheit 9-11. What? <laughs> Which was a crazy... The documentary? Film. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was the first R-rated movie I ever saw. Like, swear to God. And I loved it. Wow. I was like, yeah, like, this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you were a politically engaged kid. I was the tiniest little neoliberal, which is why I'm so, like, anti-neolib now. Like, oh my, my parents God. raised me on, like, MSNBC, like, CNN. Bill and then, Maher. And then, oh, my God, yeah. they loved Bill Maher. I, 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 I went through a Bill Maher phase because my parents watched it as well. Yes. It and just, then every happens. night they would watch like the Daily Show and Colbert. Oh that my, was pretty fun to watch. There was though. like a flower shop by my mm-hmm. house where they had all these signs that were like, um, like W stands for wrong. It was like this anti like George Bush flower shop. And I would like stand outside of it with my sister and we'd be like kids for Carrie. <laughs> It's like probably the most embarrassing thing I've ever admitted to. Wait, do you have a photo that. of this? I'm sure I do. I, I'll, I'll ask my mom I'm to send it. I'm begging you, please <laughs> find the photo of you and your sister kids. For- I need, I need like to text my mom that and have her be like, are you suddenly like getting into John Kerry again? Like what yes. is happening? I'm a carry head. <laughs> they like. I think my parents wanted to raise me very politically engaged, but I feel like that was the wrong move because, like, I think it's the wrong move. Now mm-hmm. I realize. Well, first of all, it probably made me depressed, and also now I realize a lot of news is like designed to stress you out, and totally. that's why like Fox News is so effective because it's like it it's designed to like raise your heart rate a little like even my dad who's liberal will watch it to like kind of see what the other side is saying yeah. but the problem is it has an addictive quality oh yeah yeah reactive and- yes yeah. totally reactive oh yeah yeah wow. oh yeah but- were you a big news kid i did current events uh <laughs> Wait, wait, what does that mean? Was it like for school or for yourself? Like what, what happened? For, for school. Okay. The world yeah. according to Ali. World- <laughs> <laughs> like today I read in the newspaper. I was, um, yeah, again, I'm going to sound like a broken record with the TV thing. Uh, but I would get most of my news from uh, the Denver Post. So, um, you know, it was a lot of, it started out with, Cracking open the the funny pages. Oh, classic. Um, open. Right? <laughs> but a lot of the times it was like, oh, I'd come down. My parents are reading the newspaper and I'd say, don't mind if I do. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so that was how I, I, I don't know. I always loved reading and, but I guess that was what it was filtered through. Okay. Um, I feel like I'm just realizing <laughs> this about you. Like 
you and uh, your dear friend Ryan Seawitz both have the quality of like that like kind of like 50 year old man in a like <laughs> attractive young person's body <laughs> Just like, oh, like, oh, oh, the oh, funny pages, oh, don't find yeah. the oh, oh, the Charlie Brown comic is going crazy today. <laughs> Charlie moved the football away from Lucy again. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> we have been told, um, I think some by you, like, oh, uh, you both talk like cartoon characters. Um, yeah. It's like English history teacher energy. Mm. Uh, yeah, that. <laughs> Can I say like I remember I, I it hit me what Ryan Seawitz's uh, style is on stage, which is it's not Gettysburg, but it's an address. <laughs> I love it. Yes, yeah. very um. Yeah, there's a cadence to it and a rhythm. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, like <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'd crack open the funny pages. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Crack open the funny pages. Um, most of middle school, uh, it was like, I would start my day cause I was always the first one up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd start my day and have my bowl of cereal or some toast. How early, how early did you get up? Uh, it was probably five thirty six. Oh, Are you middle still school? an early bird now? Less so. What time yeah. do you usually get up now? Well, um, I am a barista, uh, so if I have an early shift, it'll be like five. Yeah. Um, but then I guess, yeah, naturally, I just kind of rise earlier, like mm-hmm. seven, yeah. eight, if I'm feeling like sleeping Whoa. in. Whoa. <laughs> kind of frisky. <laughs> it, don't be crazy. Dangerous. Whoa. <laughs> um, Too much excitement for one yeah. day. <laughs> so you get up early. Yes. Crack the funny yeah. pages. Crack the funny pages. Um, yeah. So I think cartoons uh, in the funny pages were uh, very silly to me. I, uh, yeah, I loved, um, Kathy. <laughs> I don't know this. I don't know Kathy you gotta, either. You gotta bring us up to speed. She was this little, um, woman cartoon that would kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> but it's all drawn out. So it's, <laughs> I love how I'm happy like, this is making <laughs> It's such a woman thing to well, say. Right. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Because the cartoon, it would be like a couple boxes and then it would end with her being like. <laughs> <laughs> That's so her. It, 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 so her. And my mom got a kick out of it, which I thought was hilarious. I was like, why is Kathy so relatable? Um, <laughs> but I, yeah, it was like zits. Uh, just these little images of stuff baby blues um <laughs> i'm like i have no concept of children's cartoons on tv yeah. but the cartoons in the funny pages i was like yes more please oh <laughs> that's kind of wonderful <laughs> i love that <laughs> it was very uh yeah very wholesome mm. uh i childhood. okay i have a i have a very big question yes which is that if you could put yourself in your parents shoes in charge of you and your two siblings would you have done anything differently oh that's a good question wow that is a great question i think um i might have loosened a little bit Mm -hmm. just a skosh uh yeah yeah, because there were things that once it was kind of like me meeting friends getting out into the world it was like oh wait you actually didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have any? Do you have an example that like pops out at you right now? Oh, uh, I, well, another thing that was very regulated was uh, food and uh, snacks and. Were you that sort like of a, thing. everything has to be organic, no sugar, like that? Yes, that was Lucas's yeah, childhood that was too. It, it was. I don't know. I think that was one thing that I was like. Once I learned there could be another way, I was like, oh, man, this yeah. Kashi sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good. Um, and then I think when I kind of got out of the house, it was like, I can eat anything. Oh, did you go through like a blitz through all of that sort of stuff? Yes. Yeah. Kind of in college, it was like, 
well, I'm going to have <laughs> a sleep of Oreos every night. Because, um, <laughs> nice. yeah, it was like, I ne- never got the taste. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, it was... Yeah. Uh, Oh, can I, this is a terrible example of me asking a question just so I can answer it as well. But like, absolutely, I had uh, a lot of my cousins that they told me in like more recent years that they felt really bad for me because they were allowed to eat kind of like just a reasonable amount of reg of other stuff, like occasionally fast food, sweets and stuff. And they just, they were so, they felt so bad for me because anything that was like given my way, my dad would swat away from (laughs) my reach. Really? Oh yeah, he God. was he was really overbearing with it. So like, do you have like close family that you realize did they have like a similar reaction at all? I think the cousins that I grew up in the same vicinity of their parents were also the same. So it was oh, like okay, you know, at holiday things, there's like a secret bag of chocolate in the closet, but. Ah! And I, th- I think whenever there was a treat table or something like that, it was like, ah, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cause he just didn't get any of it. Yeah. 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 Um, Can I ask how did they like turn out? Yes. I think, well, um, there is just a lot of, uh, eating disorders in my family. Um, and so that it like persists. And so I'm like, I don't know. What is the right way because i i do think there is there can be something harmful of for sure uh, like re- regulating too much on anything really definitely uh, yeah did you see it all um like uh the backlash of courtney kardashian sort of raising her kids to be like not just like super stringent with what they eat but in judging other people like if they eat junk food they're a bad person yeah and like so many people were like you are giving your child uh, you're giving your children eating disorders this is really really bad for them exactly yeah, yeah i think like can be very harmful you have to be just cautious or because there's some family members like the way they talk about food mm. can be triggering or just like oh that's not a helpful thing yeah. for anyone to hear or for you to think about yourself that sort of thing would you be comfortable talking about your current relationship with food oh yeah yeah i feel like i have always struggled with it um yeah there have been points of really uh, limiting myself or binging mm. like it, and so i've and i i kind of as i got older it was like I want to have a relationship with it where it doesn't feel so binding or yeah. um, like the end of the world. Uh, yeah, and I guess I've always had a mentality of like people should be able to eat what they want, what makes them feel good, what brings them happiness. Mm. Uh, uh, and so I think I am in a better place with it of not one or the other of the extreme um but like my mom often it's like oh you don't have an eating disorder unless you're you know real skinny like unless it's visible to her and I think that has been something that it's like no 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 you don't know someone's mental state around food or body um and just because their body might look one way or the other that doesn't have anything to do with it yeah. yeah i have um, a good friend who um i mean i won't say his name but people know who it is um who has been in like an outpatient uh recovery center for an eating disorder and he's like a barack man obama. in a larger yeah. it's barack obama <laughs> it's... <laughs> yes barack yeah, it's, himself. it's him and yeah, talk uh, about what barry went through yeah. <laughs> well i mean for starters uh i should talk about how he and i became friends <laughs> Please get into it. Yes. Um, so we were both watching the movie Fahrenheit 9-11. <laughs> As young neoliberals. I, I was in fifth grade. They grew up so fast. <laughs> and he was a community organizer in Chicago. <laughs> and he was like, do you like this? I was like, who are you? I only see John Kerry. <laughs> John Kerry was super jealous. Like, I'm still here. <laughs> John Kerry was actually next to me. And he was like, you tell. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. 
You fucking tell him. <laughs> tell him you're spoken for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the reason I was so into John Kerry was because he and I were actually dating at the time. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of people don't know that because it's really, it would put him in a weird light yeah. to know that yeah. he was dating a child for so long. Even though it was a Carrie for kids. Yeah. <laughs> kids for he was kind, of, kids he was kind of exposing himself. Carrie for kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I just got a leg cramp. Ow, no, ow, no, ow. No, oh, no. Okay? Oh god. Ow. Ow. Oh, oh my, my god. god, what's wrong? Are you okay? Wait, do, is there anything I can do? No! Okay. Do you there. need a moment? No, I'm fine. I don't know no. what just happened. Do you need to rest <gasps> your foot on something? No. Okay. This happens to me sometimes okay. when I That's think the about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's reactionary. The body the body keeps the score. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Anyway, so you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know it's, it's trauma. Yeah, it's trauma. The body keeps so the score. So your friend eating disorder, Barack Obama eating disorder. What's oh yeah, yeah, Barack Obama. <laughs> this is like a way funnier riff than what because what I was gonna say was like serious and sad, but uh, it has been interesting to note. There is such a weird thing that's like only super thin people can have eating disorders, and it's mm-hmm. like I'm realizing more and more that like. There's, like, a lot of research about how people are kind of just born into the bodies they're born into. And, Mm -hmm. like, there's a certain amount of exercise that can change people's, like, how they look. But for the most part, like, one, it's actually, like, not that bad for you to be larger. And two, Mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily change that much based on what you eat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's a lot of truth in that. And, uh have tried to come to that place of like uh ex- acceptance of yeah it's like i do the things that make me feel good or in the moment yeah. um yeah but then you know you always have good bad days yeah. um yeah. uh where you're like wow, why am i thinking about this so much um yeah, but I, I think it is, uh, yeah, helpful to talk about. And I think it, growing up within the family, it was always like, hush, hush, no, no, we don't talk about this, um, which I think puts it in a negative light. It's like, no, it's good to talk about thoughts and feelings and, you know, to help with you're not alone and. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was there something for you that destigmatized it specifically, like a moment you remember? Ooh, uh, I think um, definitely people I looked up to in my own life, like friends um, and then people in the media as well. Like I think trying to surround what I was consuming in more positive realms than, you know, like avoiding the Kardashians and uh, that kind of yeah. harmful negative talk that you were talking about where it's like, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, they they kept that. trying to bang your head, their, <laughs> right? their hands on your, on your door being <laughs> like, let us talk to Allie. You're like, no, please. Yeah, the Kardashians um, have been wanting to talk to you for a while. I, yeah. And I really, I have them blocked. So <laughs> <laughs> why did I do that? Um, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, and then I also therapy has been very helpful for me. Therapy rules. Um, it really does. Yeah, and uh, I had it earlier today, beautiful thing. <gasps> yes. Oh yeah. That... Putting in the hours. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be cured soon. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, what it is, it's like uh so many of these things are lifelong processes or can take years to work through and uh yeah, it can come up in different realms of life. And mm-hmm. uh, what yeah. was uh, oh, sorry, were you about to go? Oh, no, no, oh, no, uh, just well, I want to ask, like, was there any huge shift just from starting the process of therapy that you noticed in your life? Because I definitely oh. had, but I want to hear you. Yeah, oh, yes, I, I think, I guess mine was a little more gradual. Okay. M- my first therapist uh, would fall asleep on me. Oh. <laughs> And I continued to see her for a year. <laughs> um, 
him. Uh, the fact that you stayed with her for a year is something you should work in, out in therapy. Exactly. No, that is very much oh, no. part of uh, my work to advocate for myself. And uh, You've left me speechless. That's oh. incredible. When she went on uh, maternity leave. And was like, okay, we'll be back. And I was like, um, actually, I think that this is the perfect time for me to tell you that I, um, I'm breaking up with you. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Um, and then she didn't hear you because she fell asleep. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. she was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's um, crazy. Yes. Yeah. So now I, it's like a year. And then uh, I fell into a, a deep, deep hole. And I was like, uh-oh. I haven't been. I I isolated myself too much. So then found a new therapist and um, it's been much better and have noticed the growth, I think, nice. uh, for myself. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. How about you? Did you have a more um, of a click moment or? Well, really, it was, I think I've spoken about it before, but it was, I only was able to start trying stand up because I started <gasps> therapy. Oh, so amazing. it was noticing that I actually felt confident enough to go, oh, I think I'm ready to try it. That was, that was a big thing. Yes. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Beforehand, but I like, I tried doing a little bit of comedy in college. I joined this group called the Comedy Forum. We would get together on Sundays to workshop material and I was just like vibrating with terror. I was like, I can't do this. Yes. And, uh. Yeah, but then I, I worked up the courage to take a class, and then I started doing open mics afterwards. And that was, like, Oh, hell yeah. Huge. I also took an improv class, which was also super scary. Improv is terrifying, <laughs> dude. You did improv, <laughs> right? I did. I started an improv. Whoa. And my therapist thinks it's a little nuts because she's like, you don't feel nervous performing? Uh, I'm like, no, that's where I feel most of myself. Uh, it, mm. I think in part because I can n not be myself, if that makes sense. Like I can be a silly character. Or yeah. uh, my fear with improv is I was like, oh, I only have myself to draw upon, though. Oh yes. And like in the most raw sense, so I was like, I don't know what's gonna happen. I can't control this. I felt very out of control. Absolutely. Yeah. That, yeah. That. Um, well, I, I think I would often just like make a noise or <laughs> it was kind of i would like surprise myself at what could get a laugh with improv oh, okay kind of like l letting myself go in the utter lack of control of like well whoever's up there with me i trust him so <laughs> that's amazing yeah. i never had yeah. that skill doing improv i was like total control freak <gasps> Yes. And that's me on stage. Oh, I, I'm like trying to control every element of the environment at all times. Oh, fascinating. Yes. Yeah. I love. Uh, yeah. So do you both feel more comfortable with stand up? I feel, I feel much more comfortable, comfortable with stand up, stand -up than up. I do with yeah. improv. With improv, it's hard because I feel like I always needed like a gimmick or a thing that was like, I feel like in, I know this is like a funny, goofy thing that I'm doing. And then one time I had a teacher who was like, you're, you know you play zany and that's fine but like for this <laughs> round like try playing normal and then i remembered like i was in a scene where like me and this other guy were like a bird and <laughs> this guy was like you want to swoop in with me to this place and i said something like of course we'll do anything together we're a couple <laughs> <laughs> And everyone laughed, and I didn't know why everyone was laughing. That's a, that's yes. a good line, though. <laughs> I was like, this is so dumb. <laughs> but it was fun, and, and I just don't know how to... Har I, did you ever figure out how to, like, harness that magic a little bit, like, with improv? Oh, it, I feel like it's very difficult. What was that? <laughs> that actually moved by itself. That did. I. It wants to improvise. <laughs> It's my shredder. Oh, cool. Like a document shredder? Are we just not going to like point out the fact that your shredder just <laughs> moved by itself? Yeah, it got, totally did. Hopped off the table. Is this why I got a leg cramp? To, like, <gasps> is there like paranormal happening right now? Dad? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? <laughs> <laughs> If you're here, Lucas's dad. Um, Don't make your presence known we're again. We're sorry. <laughs> we're yeah. Can you can you make yourself small? <laughs> it's like where people are like, oh, you need to take up more space with ghosts. We're like, you really need to take less space right now. Yeah, yeah. 
you've had your time. You know? Yeah. Don't learn from <laughs> Louis Capaldi. Do not yeah. occupy space well. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that was weird. Literally, it was just it, for those who. So it was just. It was a little like handheld shredder thing that I used to lay, and it was just on my dining table, I'm and really then it just over fell this. off. It did happen. It, uh, yes. We're not going crazy. No, no, no we're no. not going crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I wish we had a camera on it. <laughs> I'm like freaking out right now. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> the shredder hit the floor. <laughs> it really did. The shredder hit the floor. Let the, the shredder hit the floor. floor. Let the shredder hit the floor. Hit the floor. <laughs> 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 God damn. Oh my god! So, Where were we? Well, well see, that's what I love about improv. <laughs> is because <laughs> the presence of ghosts. Yes. Yes. And that you can be surprised by your environment. Um, Too surprised. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> and then you have to incorporate it. Oh yeah. My god. <laughs> see, I oh. like in stand-up that you can be like, "That was weird," and then go on. But in mm-hmm. improv, that's the whole. That's the scene. Yes. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, and I think I, there were times where it was like using, you can really use your space or what happens around you to your um, uh, benefit of uh, like when you do address it or incorporate it in that way, the audience is like uber impressed. Yes. Um, Yeah, there were times where like a siren would go by and I'd incorporate it into the scene and then people would be like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah um so the but i guess there were things in improv that i relied on mm. uh and i did have a teacher once that was like you tend to play anxious <laughs> 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 like every character is anxious try something else um but i took that and i applied it to my stand-up <laughs> yeah that was also a really good improv teacher impression yeah. that you just did <laughs> y'all tend to play anxious yeah, right. <laughs> why don't you play bold kiddo branch yeah. out gabby did you ever have any like moments in improv where you were like all right i kind of killed that one moment did you ever have anything like that with Ooh, uh, this one's so dumb are we yeah. ready Ooh. so i was improvising with my friend barack obama yes and um <laughs> We were, it was my old improv team, Just Gravy, and we were in rehearsal. Our best stuff was always in rehearsal. I don't know why. (laughs) We're doing this scene where um, we're like at a museum and there's like an audio record, you know, at the museum, there's like the audio descriptions. Yes. And uh, someone's like, oh, this is uh, uh, narrated by, and they mean to say Helen Mirren. But what they say is Helen Miram. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, Helen Miram. She's different than Helen Mirren. And then that became a whole run where at some point someone tagged out and was like, yeah, I'm Helen Miram. Tough name. Oh, I love <laughs> they it. just started like being the actress Helen yeah. Miram. That to me is like so stupid and nobody else would like it on stage, but like with my six friends in rehearsal, we were fucking dying. Like, yeah, Helen Miram. You know? <laughs> yes. No, it really kind of, I guess that is part of improv. It kind of becomes these stupid inside jokes. Mm. Yeah. That just exist in that moment. Yeah. Of, yeah. And sometimes it is just funny to the team. The audience is like, what's going on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because that's the thing with improv. It's a lot of like fucking around with your friends. Whereas yeah. stand up, you're like fucking around with a whole room. And it feels like in a way yeah. you have to make it universal. Totally. But that's the challenge. That's the joy of it. Yes. Yeah. Do, do you ever, do you, do you riff with the audience when you do stand up? I feel like that is what I'm least comfortable or good Likewise. at. Yeah. Likewise, yeah. I, um, I think often I can get thrown off. Um if it's too in your face there, there was one time where uh, I started playing a piano bit and this guy in the audience goes, Oh fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then as the character, I said, ha, 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 fuck yeah. And that killed. Nice. That's very good. Yeah, so it was yeah, yeah. like, I think if it's a positive thing that I can incorporate in, mm. that's fun. But I, I have a lot of trouble with crowd work. Mm. Yeah. I I have not 
I've not consistently figured out crowd work. Yes. In a way, and that I think that if I got back into improv and really like strengthened that muscle, I think I would get better at it. Oh, totally. But, uh, I like crowd work. I can lose people on it though. I can <laughs> I can do crowd work that's too long and takes up like half my set because I'll just I'll get distracted. I'll just start talking to people. I did this show where I just ate shit where like I just ended up asking a woman like the whole story of how she proposed to her husband because mm-hmm. I was like I want to know <laughs> yes and then at one point I was like I know this isn't strictly funny and you'd think people would be like laughing because they're like thank you for indulging the elephant in the room but instead everyone was like yeah oh no, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> they're like we agree and there was no. silence I was like I know this isn't strictly funny and they were like mm-hmm. oh no <laughs> What sucks is that I'll think of like the perfect thing I could have said to an audience member, like as I'm on the way home from a show. I'm like, that would have been so good in the moment. Yes. I always think of it after. Always. And I think that's who I am as a person as well. I'm very bad in the moment. Yeah. And then once I've had a couple days to think about it, I'm like, oh, that could have been good. Yeah. <laughs> Was there anything you wish you would have said to your therapist who fell asleep on you <laughs> in the moment? I wish I had. Um... You say I'm cured? Okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. And then she's like, <laughs> yes. Or or like uh I don't know, I should have clapped or like, hey, I'm actually not gonna pay for this. <laughs> <laughs> Check please. <Yes. laughs> You're footing the bill. Right? Check please on there, you. <laughs> there was one time I went ice skating with my friend in New York City and the uh locker we had, um, there was a loudspeaker announcement like hey locker 209 please come to the front desk and i was like lol how much you want to bet that's our locker and so we ended up going and checking and they had cut the lock to get inside and like rummage through our stuff because someone thought they left a credit card in there it's a whole thing and then i was like wait we paid for that lock and i think i'm gonna go get the money back (laughs) Like talking big game with my friend, yeah. and then I went into the office and I was like, "I'm sorry, excuse me, I don't know. <laughs> sorry, so behind the locker two and nine, and uh, you." And the guy was like, "Yeah, here's your, your eleven dollars." Um, so I was like, "Yeah, I stood up for myself," but I wish I'd been like, "Hey." <laughs> oh, do you wish you'd you been still- more forceful? Yes. Yeah. Or I, yeah, I think I. Generally speaking, though, I feel like it's not good to be forceful. It's true. Yeah. Well, I'm a very, yeah, non-confrontational person. I think I just wish that I had been more resonant in my being. Like, hey, mm. right. my name's Alec, <laughs> and I have a question. <laughs> Hi, of... First, introduce yourself. <laughs> yes. State your business. Right. <laughs> Establish a connection. Demand. Exactly. Yeah. Do you yeah. remember a time in a pr- and then we'll we'll move to listener submissions, but yeah. um, which I feel like you're gonna have a fun time with. Oh yeah, this is um, do you remember a time in like a personal relationship where you feel like you really stood up for yourself and you were proud of it? Ooh, that's oh, a great wow. question. Yes, um, I I think I do put others' feelings ahead of my own often, mm-hmm. um, and so a lot of the times it was like, oh, we should just be friends and then more recently i've been like no i'm actually not interested in that um my friends treat me better than that so i wish you the best but i don't think like being friends is something i want to continue to pursue or like i put a lot of effort into uh connections or friendships and so it's like, no, I want someone who values me as much as I value them. Um, so in instances of that, of, and I guess it can be tricky of uh, like something that maybe once re- was romantic or like that was being explored. And I think that often the thing to say is like, no, we should still be friends. So I've been working on like, no, no, no. I appreciate that. I totally understand where you're coming from. But I don't think that that is something that will be worthwhile for me. So standing up a little bit more. That's like good. That. Yeah. Sounds it, awesome. <laughs> what I'm hearing is just basically getting comfortable saying no. Yes. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And I think that has been a struggle my entire life of mm. saying no. And I, I was listening to some podcast that was like, 
everyone is so good at saying no. And I was like, I'm not. I have never been <laughs> yeah. good. That yeah. is like not natural. And I think that's part of why I loved improv because I was like, yes, and I said, yes, yes. I say yes <laughs> to everything. Um, so yeah, like practicing that yeah. muscle of saying no, of like, no, alley privileges are important. I had a friend who was like, started thinking about things of like, people are privileged to have to have you in your life. life exactly yeah. so that spinning that i was like oh okay that's helpful that's that's oh, very wonderful. beautiful yeah. and it also acknowledges the truth which is that sometimes saying no in an improv scene is the funniest <laughs> thing you can do <laughs> exactly and that's not said enough that's yeah said. <laughs> like if we were to do an improv scene right now <laughs> lucas uh yeah give me a uh non-geographical location okay non-geographical mm -hmm. location um a gazebo gazebo okay yeah ali you and me are in a gazebo start okay. start a scene oh gabby i love this gazebo that you've built what <laughs> 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 and that's funny exactly <laughs> And the audience immediately connects. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, I've not built a gazebo before. So relatable. <laughs> Just the most negate. What, what are you talking? <laughs> Where? I don't even know you. <laughs> I will say that improv makes me laugh hardest when people yeah. are like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who the fuck are you? And what have you done with my dog? Like, exactly. No more yes and more no but. <laughs> right. Yeah, just and, negation. And that's the energy we are bringing to <laughs> our listeners so today. So if you don't know, our <laughs> listeners write in and sometimes they want advice and sometimes they just want us to comment on their lives. Fun. Can you do that? Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, I got one pulled up. Hi, meerkats and guests. I need some relationship advice. I'm in love with my best friend slash ex. We dated for a while last year as freshmen and hated each other for the rest of the school year. Last summer, we reconnected and became friends again. After a while of talking, I started having a crush on him again, and I don't know what to do. Any advice? I really want to stay friends, but I also would love to be in a relationship again. Oh, wow. Oof. Well, I want to know if this individual senses that the ex slash best friend maybe feels the same thing, because I feel like there is obviously around that time. You're not that good, maybe at sensing those things. But like, do you feel like he's trying to be? Is it a he? Wait, what are the what are the, what are the, the genders? The... And there's only two writers. You... <laughs> there's oh, since there's only that two. was a joke. Um, um, the, gender unclear. OK, OK. Cool. So this ex slash best friend, like. But the uh, the partner is a is a he is, is a he okay so do you feel like he's trying to be physically close to you do you feel like there are unnecessary moments of contact where he's just like trying to be like oh hey or like a little stroke Ooh. how is that <laughs> yeah no but uh, moments of contact and connection is he trying to have those with you and then trying to gauge his unspoken response maybe that's where i would begin what would you mm. say um i would say yeah i feel like it's um i don't know I, there's a part of me that's like there's no such thing as an unrequited crush but like there is um so i'm conflicted on what to say what do you think yeah i had a similar experience at one point uh, where it was like, oh, I didn't quite know. I was like, oh, we're friends. And then it was like, oh, wait, I think he wants to be more than friends. And then I was like, ah, pump the brakes. And then distance. And then be like reconnected as friends. And then I was like, hmm, hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with the encouragement of my friends, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to say something. Just loosely put it out on the table of like, hey, I know things were confusing or like didn't work out in the past. This doesn't have to be a now thing. You don't have to answer ever. But if you'd ever be interested in trying things romantically again or, you know, like I would be open to that. 
Uh, but if not, <laughs> no worries. Uh, <laughs> no worries if not. And so it was, uh, oh, no, that is not something I'm interested in. So I think it took a lot of courage to like say that is that huge. being able to do that. Yes. And I don't often who, oh, uh, <laughs> but it was like, OK, I totally respect that. And now I have clarity in my head of like, OK, this is not something that is worth pursuing right. and I can move on. And that's closure. Exactly. Regardless of what happens, you will get some closure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So if you're comfortable saying something something to this person, like, hey, I know it's been complicated in the past. I don't know how you're feeling. Um, but I could be open to trying things again. And then at least you'll get maybe some sort of answer. Yeah. That sounds like a very uh, good that's that sounds like the best course of action. I like yeah. that a lot. That's thoughtful. I like that a lot as well. <laughs> That's uh, that's a pretty good. <laughs> hey, oh, that's but it's pretty good. I'll so tough. <laughs> when, especially if you're seeing someone every day or I know, yeah. <sighs> it's it's hard. It's like with there's certain situations. There's like school and like being a comedian. And I don't know <laughs> what else there is. Yeah. But the, most people, I think, like the reason adults don't have crushes anymore is because you don't often see the same people over and yeah. over again. Yes. The t- the times people get crushes, school, workplace, yeah. open mics. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. And I think that's the thing. It's like unless I have I'm consistently seeing someone in my vicinity a lot it's like i don't have a crush yeah Yeah. there was before i get into another listener submission i remember some study done where they showed you like a bunch of faces yes and they were like do you have you asked like they would ask you like who do you find the most attractive and it was the one they showed most often just from the reinforcement of being showed and it was a pretty woman, but it was but it was the one they showed most often that got the most feedback. Interesting. Ooh, are you saying anyone can like women if they're shown women enough? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. That is exactly what I'm saying. Lucas, are you endorsing conversion therapy? <laughs> no, I'm in <laughs> I was gonna say oh, carry no. for kids. Uh- <laughs> You know, there's this study done where if you electrify... Yeah, just... Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> it's run by a cool organization called The Kirk, <laughs> is that? I'm, I'm reading it wrong. Oh, tr- okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Conversion therapy is bad, and I'm sorry if Thank you've, you for you've s- gone <laughs> through it. I'm, 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 I like ladies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's okay. Okay. I got another one pulled up. This is a this is a two parter. Okay, so bit of background info. Ready? Oh yeah, ready. bit of background info. I'm pretty young in comparison to what I imagine your general viewer demographic may be. I'm a trans boy, even though that isn't relevant. He him pronouns. I'm only 13, so that's year eight in the UK where I'm from, and seventh grade in the US, I think. And I'd like to talk a little bit about the drama in my friend group slash extended friend group. Whoa! Oh yeah, this is so juicy. So I have a partner. They them. So mature the way they yes. talk. It's, yeah. I love kids. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Yes. So, so much I have a partner, they, them, who I have only been dating for a month or so. Let's call them X. And someone else whom I suspect has a crush on me, she, her, whom for the purpose of storytelling shall be Y. I have had a crush yeah. on and off uh, on X for around six months now. And I told Y that I liked this person about three months or so ago. When me and X had been dating for a few days, they sent me a screenshot of Y asking them if if wait. they had a crush on me a few months ago before wait, we started dating. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hold on. Okay. But I don't get it. Pump the brakes. Yeah. Um, it's a sc- who sent who the screenshot? I'm trying to look at you it know. now. Yeah. <laughs> I meant oh, in, in the, the story yes. of the oh, no, no. <laughs> of the <laughs> that was me being so genuine. <laughs> oh like, my heart. allergic to gold. Sorry? Allergic to gold. Yeah. Allergic to gold. I'm allergic to gold. <laughs> <laughs> I told you did. what wait. Okay, so okay, I'll read that again. Yeah, yeah. So I have had a crush on and off. Uh, for X for about six months now, and I told Y that I liked this person about three months or so ago. So okay, got it. three months into liking X, this individual told Y about it. And then, yes. uh, and so when me and X had been dating for a few days, they sent me a screenshot of Y asking them if 
if they had a crush on me oh a few months before we started dating without my asking this will be relevant mm. later recently mm. y has been acting like they may have a crush on me asking if i believe in having a second option i don't and refusing to tell me the second uh hold on i'm sorry why is like oh what what, what you think people can fall in love with multiple people like mm. why is being pretty obvious can you believe these middle schoolers are already poly what's or <laughs> trying to be ugh no, this is... It's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Give up. This is... Um, I, I feel like at this age, I was like... Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> 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 like, this is so mature. I know. I like, agree. Very mature, wow. yeah. yeah th- uh, well, I guess, I mean, the screenshotting and meddling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drama, complications. Yeah. I think the fact that you can screenshot that young that's true i yeah i didn't know how to do that just doing bing uh, like, <laughs> it occurred to me that i didn't know i was really like my drama at 13 was like barry bonds broke the home record but <laughs> home run record but he's on steroids what do we think of that yes <laughs> that was so intense for me really I was like, hank aaron did it all natural <laughs> but he was on amphetamines it later turns out so and babe ruth you know, had the record oh before, gosh. but he didn't play against black players. <laughs> so there really is no pure home run record. That was kind of my thing. <laughs> a, l- a little old fashioned drama. A little, <laughs> <laughs> a little historical baseball drama. <laughs> he didn't play bl- against black players, so it was too pure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oy, oy, oy. Okay, there's this okay. whole second part that we yeah, have to Yeah, there's a whole yes, second yes. part that we haven't gotten into. Okay, wow. so recently, Y has been acting like they may have a crush on me, asking mm-hmm. if I believe in having a second option I don't, and refusing to tell me the second of... Uh, months before we started? Uh, are you sure you got like the whole screenshot of this? I'm... I feel like you may have cut off something. Did I? I oh, sorry. No, no, no. You didn't. My mistake. Okay. Ugh, believe women. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, and uh, asking if I believe in having a second option, I don't, and refusing to tell me the second of their two crushes, despite the fact that they have almost always told me their crushes and asked oh. me to hang out with them a lot recently. Although we very rarely hang out. And even once saying that we looked like we are dating when we were hanging out together. Oh, yeah, why is down bad? She's down bad. Yeah. yeah. Why feel, is down bad? Well, it, then again, this this reminds me of like middle school, of, of sort of like sort of like soft launching. Like, oh my God, we look like a couple. It's so crazy, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, uh, people are talking and yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, they, uh, they think we're dating. Yeah. <laughs> well, wait, wait, that's crazy. Yeah. Yes. Should we like uh, uh, uh do something? Uh, yeah. Um You know, Lucas, mm. some of our listeners think we're together. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we should, maybe some if they maybe say it, if they're saying it, they're saying it I mean yeah. I guess we gotta try or something. <laughs> When people say, uh, yeah. who, 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 who am I to refute what the uh, what the many fans? What the media says? What, the media says. <laughs> what Tucker Carlson said. Who am I to argue with the liberal media? <laughs> people are saying the meerkats are together uh-huh. and that should terrify you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get through yeah, it. Yeah, okay, okay. We're okay. going to get through it. We're going to get through it. Okay, so. <laughs> This is endurance, endurance. Although we rarely hang out, and even when saying that we looked like we were dating when we were hanging out together, I feel kind of guilty if they do have a crush on me because I'm not interested, but they did try to ask X out for me, so I don't know how to feel. I wanted your opinions mm. on whether or not I'm overreacting and what I should do, seeing as they did try to get us together. Thanks for reading. Love both of your content, by the way. And if this does get read on the pod, then hi, Henry. I know you're a regular listener. Thanks. <gasps> hi, Henry. Cute. Hi, Henry. Hi, Henry. So... <laughs> Number one, you're going to laugh about how much of your time this has occupied for you in the future. You're going <laughs> to yes. laugh about this in the future, first and foremost. Um, I think, well, it sounds like you're, it sounds to me like you're uncomfortable with this friend trying to soft launch the two or like add more into your life. So vocalize your feelings. Be like, hey, this makes me uncomfortable. I am seeing, uh, I am seeing X. I do not want to see Y as well. If that is, the, if that is the case. Yeah. yeah. Um, as someone who has been down bad for a lot of <laughs> men and women in my life, I uh, I know what it's like to uh, <laughs> to uh, try and help 
the romantic pursuits of someone you're in love with because you just want to be involved. Mm. I I feel like I would ask someone out for some. I would be like, can I, can I make your hinge profile? Like I'll do any, I'll do anything. Um, so they totally have a crush on you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it almost sounds like, Maybe why and the narrator, yeah, uh, were friends and our friends, still, are, and I our think. friends, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, hopefully a conversation can be gently had, like, uh, I'm so flattered by, mm. you know, your help or your interest in me, but right now I'm interested in getting to know x they're my partner um yeah i communication is so hard but i think everyone is better for it and it's something i'm working on too Mm. Uh, yeah i think everyone's trying to get better i think that's exactly common yes yeah like even though it can be hard to say the feelings yeah yeah it'll it'll clarify in the long run indeed i i (sighs) I think that this is leading toward a path where, like, why will eventually ask you out. Mm -hmm. And I think that you should wait until that happens to say anything. Maybe I'm wrong. But if they never bring it up, I wouldn't. I Mm. personally wouldn't be like, so I know you want to fuck me. (laughs) Um, Or maybe say, or you could say, like, hey, I could be reading this wrong. But there's been some things that you said that made me feel a little uncomfortable where I feel like this is your intention. I could be wrong. That's you could do that, too. Yeah. That's because that also gives them the opportunity to say, oh, my God, no, no, no. That's not what I was trying to do. I'm sorry if that came across. I will try not to do that in the future. And then you could be like, cool, I'm glad we sorted this out. And totally. then you kind of both get to save face. Yes. That I think is probably that's maybe a real a good way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like either way depending on how you want to approach things or it it does sound like um the narrator wants to clarify some things or yeah. like hey i think this boundary has been or like i have felt this boundary has been overstepped for yeah sure. or yeah well whew, this is a, that one was a doozy but that was a lot i wish that i i I wish you the best, narrator. And X seems really cool. I'm yeah. glad you're yeah. getting to know them. Exactly. And uh, I, Y also seems like a cool friend. It feels like there's nice people in your friend group. Like, yes. yeah. Sometimes we get these submissions. Like, my my friend was so nice to me. And then she called me a bitch and stomped what? on my face. Yeah. <laughs> Do, are they being mean? I'm like, yes. These are, these are very... Mm-hmm. These are really okay origin stories for a lot of people. That's what I'm hearing. Is that yeah. these are all probably very good people. Yeah. They're just they're they're new to these emotions as well and they're not sure and it's sound yeah, it's they sound like good people. I will say that. Yeah. It's a fraught time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I have always like, Oh, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. That was yeah. always my <laughs> Definitely for me as well. I, yeah. I never want to cause anyone to like feel bad or like yeah, I'm, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway. Me personally. I'll hurt anyone. Yeah, you are. Couldn't care. Couldn't care. Well, time for you to hurt someone because we're coming to the final uh, uh, section of the podcast where... Bless Sorry. you. That yeah. was very hurtful of me. <laughs> Dad, stop making Gabby sneeze. Yeah. Uh, it's him. <laughs> He's real. That shredder, I'm still not over it. If something else falls, I'll be like, okay, I am moving. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here. Yeah. So we're coming to the end. And we have a thing called Self Perception Corner where we ask our guest to describe the ways in which they believe other people perceive them. And then we say how we actually perceive you. Oh, fun. Okay. I do love this sort of stuff. Uh, I think I am often perceived by people who know me and by strangers um, as always happy, uh, bubbly, extra nice to a fault. Uh, and there have been times where I've been told I'm hard to get to know. Mm. That is what I'll say. Mm. <laughs> I definitely think you're a bit of a mystery in Ooh. certain ways, but I, I think it's because you have like this fun, goofy spirit. Um, and it really comes out when you're on stage. 
Like it's oh, so you. fun to watch like your piano characters. I feel like it's <laughs> like in some ways it feels like I'm seeing like the real you even though you're like playing characters. Um, Cause I'm seeing like your thoughts through. I'm thinking of like the Lacey character that you do. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Friends. <laughs> yeah. It's just so like you perceive the world in a really interesting kind of like musical funny way. But I also just think there's like a lot to you and it's it's nice getting to know you. And I think sometimes it's like, I don't know that you're hard to get to know, but sometimes it's nice when someone's not immediately like, here's everything about me at yeah. once, yeah. <laughs> which kind of how I am. I'm like, here I am, you know. So it's nice when someone has a little bit more of that, like, I'll tell you, you know, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, and I, I appreciate that about you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I will say that I've sort I've had a little bit of that idea of like, okay, like you're not difficult to get to know, but like I feel like something that I empathize with is that I see a little bit of like you putting on like your best version of yourself for people. Totally. I sort of I, that's what I perceive a little bit. But also what I have seen is I've seen you on stage get a little more risque. <laughs> and so I fun. I Ooh. love seeing that because I'm like Oh, this is like the beginning of Ally Unleashed. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. oh, this is going to be awesome. And so I see, um, so like, it's sort of similar, like how your characters are like sort of maybe different parts of your personality that you sort of put on as like a mask to show people. I see like the divisions getting slightly mm -hmm. worn away between them into a, a nice coalition or yes. coalescence. Yeah. COVID, yes. what the, what the, what, what's a good word? COVID-19. COVID-19. <laughs> I see a good COVID-19 between all of the sides of Alley. Thank you. I'm bringing it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also, I think you're just like this, this, I can't wait until you're like i don't know if you want to have kids or not but i feel like there's like a wine mom vibe in your future <laughs> you like having a glass of wine and being like all right <laughs> letting loose yeah, yeah. Letting loose. and i just adore it about you i mean it's so pure and wholesome and fun and oh, i just think you, you bring like an awesome energy to the places you yeah. are i oh, appreciate oh, it oh no there's a there's a big generosity about you that i'm like oh, oh thank oh, you nice. yeah. yeah 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 well i think it that is all very resonating with me i uh think in the past it's like taken me a long time to trust people or like feel safe to open myself up at yeah. all mm. um but yeah I've felt so uh, just like wonderful in the community I've been able to find in New York of like uh inspired by other people and like no you you are safe to be your full self not just he 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 one version <laughs> <laughs> yeah not the cartoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. With a little bit of cartoon. What did yeah. Kathy do again? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, couldn't be me. <laughs> couldn't be me. <laughs> I need to look up these Kathy cartoons. Well, I do remember there was, she got discontinued <gasps> when I was in high school. Canceled? I, uh, mm. I, yeah. Yeah. Tucker I, Carlson strikes again. <laughs> And that should terrify you. Yeah. yeah, I remember my mom sitting me down and saying, Kathy's no longer. <laughs> oh, was it like, like a pet died? dying? <laughs> what, right? I think the creator just didn't want to create new oh. content anymore. And that's so fair. And that's... we get it. No, it's not. <laughs> I'll say it's not fair. I, I don't think that's a valid choice. <laughs> More content. Creators you should, should only never do... stop doing yeah. what we like. <laughs> what will you want them to yeah. do? Yeah. But in terms of what we like, we want to see Ali Lawrence live. Yeah. Where can the people uh, find you online? Oh, yes. Where can they see you live? What's going on? Absolutely. I run an open mic every Wednesday, 6 p.m. at Star Bar. Uh, love for everyone to come perform. Uh, it's a bucket mic. Uh, I am Ali, L-O-L-R-E-N-C-E on um, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. I'm not very good at any of them, so uh, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> awesome nice. yes. oh what do i want to what do i have going on in my yeah. life um oh yeah i've been getting really into knickknacks so <gasps> if you have any suggestions of fun knickknacks then um let me know um yeah. and then in terms of where you can see me i'm on instagram hip soccer mom oh we have 
Finally, <laughs> it's not a super cast. Or sorry, it's not a Patreon. <laughs> it is yeah. a super cast. It's not a Patreon, but it's basically a Patreon. It's called yes. Supercast. You can sign up to be a meerkat for five dollars a month, and Indeed. you get lots of bonus content. You can sign up to be on our close friend story. Get bonus on content. Instagram. Yes, we're going to be posting uh, extra stuff uh, periodically. We're going to be hosting AMAs on said close friend story. You'll find all about it if you go to it's supercast dot. Tuna, I don't know what actually. Hold on, let me. It's in our link tree. It's in our link tree. Yes. So if you go on our Instagram, you will go to the link tree and you will see it there. You'll be able to subscribe. Please do so. It would support us a lot, and it's a great way for us to connect with you guys even more. So. Yes. Awesome. Thank yeah. you to Ali Lauren. Thank you, Thank you both. This is amazing. Beautiful, and we will see you guys next week. Bye bye. Yeah.